Hi, my name is Julie and I'm with the Pigeon Letters design team. Um, today we are going to be making a faux sienna type watercolor painting. Uh, sienna type is the type of photography that uses the sun to develop it into this beautiful blue hue. Uh, we're going to be using indigo paint um, and a little creativity to fake it. <laughs> um, I hope that you enjoy this tutorial and I can't wait to create it with you. So this is everything you guys are going to need. Um, it's not very much. Most importantly is going to be this indigo color. Um, I already have it here on my palette, but if you have not exactly that, you just want to want to go with like a deep blue to really match that cyanotype. Um, I'm using kind of a big sheet of paper. This is 12 by 12. I just feel like it'll look cool. If you use a smaller one, um, you don't have to get such a large brush, but this is a 14 round and then a six round for the little details. Um, so to start off, I'm gonna mark it off on the edges with this painter's tape. Um, if you're using a smaller piece of um, paper, feel free to use a skinnier tape or washi tape or something. Um, this is just like a, a lot of real estate to cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and line that up. And when you use washi tape or painter's tape, um, stick it to your shirt or something, your jeans, your yoga pants, if you're like me, first. Um, and that's gonna help it not rip up your paper when you're pulling it off. All right, so next we're gonna draw some stuff on here. We're gonna draw some little leaves. Try to leave these a little bit rounded, a little more organic. Uh, the way that the actual prints work is they kind of leave the lines a little fuzzy. So um, we don't want it too sharp, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're just gonna do, start here. Um, you're going to want to draw pretty lightly. I'll draw a little darker so that you can see it. <laughs> okay. um, normally, you might do like one line for your little stem. We're leaving this part white. So you're going to want to do both sides of it, if that makes sense. Just sort of curve it down. And you can always go back in and erase, you know, these little marks here. Do some little smaller ones down here. Okay. All right. So we have that. We're going to get your larger brush, your water, and your blue. Um, we're going to be working from the outside in. Okay, so go ahead and wake up your blue and we'll get start painting. All right, so you're going to get a generous amount of, um, oops, cat hair. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get a generous amount of the indigo on your brush and we're just gonna work our way in okay. you can use a flat brush for this if you want um, I just happen to like round brushes a little bit better um, I feel like they spread it a little more and you can kind of go in whatever pattern you want. I'm sort of going circular around it. Um, but again, if you've seen the actual 
I don't know what's going on over here. If you see the actual cyanotypes, um, they're just like a really pretty blue. Okay, what is happening? Okay, well, sometimes paper's weird, and I'm obviously having weird things happen over there. What the heck? Not, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what's going on with my paper. Please ignore me, I'm having a moment. I don't know, maybe there was a little bit of um, soap or something in my water cup. using a lot of water on this, a lot of paint, um, and it doesn't need to be too perfect. All right, and as we work our way in, don't, if you feel confident with your big brush skills, that's great. Um, I'm going to switch over to the size six so that I don't, you know, fumble on the lines here. Uh, just try to keep your edges wet while we switch over. You can add a little more to the outside. So uh, with these cyanotypes, they um, sort of are a little bit lighter next to whatever you put on them, a leaf, a flower, um, you know, it kind of gives them their little effect. So we're going to try to mimic that the best that we can. So just use water and sort of blend the outside in towards it, if that makes sense. We're funny. If some of your little edges are starting to dry, just grab some water and try mixing them in a little bit. If you hear whispering, that is my three-year-old doing her best at being quiet. <laughs> she tries. can clean up these edges a little bit. When we're done, we just want to get all the water on there before these other oops, little parts dry.
pieces up. So just really, really lightly with just the edge. Get in all the little crevices. And you could easily do this, paint it all blue, and then go over it with an opaque white. I just don't think it's as fun. It doesn't give you um, that empty space that you get from a true cyanotype. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Definitely one of those words that I've only ever read and never had to say out loud. <laughs> okay. Oops. Okay. All right, so now that that is wet, we are gonna go back with our big brush and we are gonna try to meet those wet spots with some more blue. even it out a little and again if you're working on a smaller scale you might not have to do this step um, it's just this one's so big that it started drying and I have my heater cranking today because it is freezing cold well it's not freezing cold but it's cold for California <laughs> It's gonna be so pretty when it's all dry. And you can do this, you, you can do the one little leaf pattern um, or you can, you know, do some little flower bouquet, monogram, well, it's sky's the limit because it's fake. <laughs> All right, well, I, I mean, you're done, but I am going to step away and let this dry and then meet you guys back here so you can see it when it's finished. All right, and I will see you all soon. All right, and your painting is all finished. Um, I went ahead and pulled off the painter's tape, give you some nice crisp edges, um, but this is it. And I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please, if you try it, tag me on Instagram, let me know what you think. Um, and I can't wait to see what you make. Thank you.